Hi, this is Body Jones, and on this episode of All Things Blogging, I'm going to share one of my all-time favorite tools. It's called Screaming Frog SEO Spider. It might sound like a funny name, but Screaming Frog is one of the most powerful and valuable tools available. And today, I'm going to show you 10 ways you can use it to improve your SEO and increase your traffic. So 10 reasons you need to be using Screaming Frog for your blog right after this. Okay, so what is Screaming Frog? Screaming Frog is basically what you call a crawler, and that's the same thing that Google and other search engines use to collect all of the data that they do from the web. So it starts at a seed URL, wherever you decide to start it. In this case, with Screaming Frog, it's going to be on your homepage usually. First, it collects all of the information on that first page, and then it finds all of the links on that page too, and it follows every single link and collects all the information from every one of those pages, and it just goes on and on like that. And when you're finished crawling, you've got all that information that you can go over and use to make improvements on your website. To get Screaming Frog, you could just search in Google for Screaming Frog, and uh, you can see the website here, screamingfrog.co.uk. You can download it for, like I said, Mac, Windows, or uh, Linux. There's a free version, which you can use to crawl up to 500 URLs. So if you have a small site, you can use this for free. If you got a larger site, the paid version is 149 pounds per year, which in dollars is it's under $200 a year. That's just a really good price compared to comparable tools that do the same thing. And this the benefit of this one is that it's actually on your computer. You install it on your computer. The performance is just way better and it's just much more reliable. So once you have Screaming Frog installed, it's going to look something like this. And you can see at the top here, it says enter URL to spider. That's the, where you would put your starting URL or your, your home page in most cases. And you've got some controls here to start, stop. There's a lot more here that you'll get to see as we go through these examples. So to start out, I'm just going to enter a starting URL here. And this is a blog that I set up on WordPress.com. And it's got four blog posts, I believe, and it's got three pages, I want to say, not including the home page. So I just put the home page here, including the uh, protocol, the HTTPS or HTTP, whichever it is in your case, and push start. You could see that it's done pretty quickly and it's found um, eight pages here. Now, one really important thing to note is that even though it's just found eight, HTML pages are kind of pages of content. The total number of URLs it's used is 52. Now, that's 52 out of the 500 total that you can crawl. And the reason why this number is so much bigger is because it includes all the images, CSS, JavaScript, and any other files that are linked to from your pages. So depending on the types of files that you're using and, and images that you're using, things like that, you will either reach your limit or not. So I would say most people with small sites are going to be okay to use the free version of this. Um, but if not, you, you know, it's just worth trying just to see if you can. One other thing to note is that there's a lot of configuration you can do if you're paying for this tool. But with the free version, I don't believe you're allowed to change the configuration. So this, what I'm using right now is kind of the default out of the box setup. All right, so that's pretty much how you use it. There's a lot more here, like I said, but we'll get to a lot of those uh, in the examples that I'm about to show you. So, okay, let's go ahead and get into the list. You might notice that uh, the numbers have changed here. That's because I had to go and add in a few examples of um, things that we're gonna check for, including broken links and redirects. So the first thing we're gonna check for is gonna be broken links. Okay, to get a list of all of your 404s, you would go to the menu and just go to the bulk export menu, look for response codes, and then do uh, client error 400, or it says 4XX in links. Click that and it will save uh, a copy for you. And that's that, you'll just open that file and I'll show you that really quick. All right, here we go, I've just opened this in Excel. 
So these are the two things you mainly need. The page the bad link is on and then the bad link itself so you'll know what to look for. You can see this are, these are examples of uh, internal and external broken links. All right, number two is gonna be to make a sitemap. To do that, you just come up to the menu, choose sitemap, create XML sitemap. And you can just leave this the way it is. Uh, the default is fine. Just click next and it'll just let you save this wherever you want. And once you're done with that, you can upload it to your site. And then you always wanna make sure to let Google know that your sitemap is there by adding it in Google Search Console. Okay, use number three is going to be to check your existing sitemap. So if you've got a sitemap, it's always a good idea to make sure that there are no errors in it. A lot of times you can get bad URLs in there, things that uh, are broken links or maybe pages that don't exist anymore, or even things that redirect. It's always a good idea to keep your uh, sitemap clean. So this is how to do that. You just go to uh, mode up here and you'll change the mode. Initially it starts on spider mode. You want to change it to list mode. And once you've done that, you just click this upload button. And whether you choose download sitemap or download sitemap index is going to depend on whether your sitemap is all on one page, like one sitemap, or in some cases, for example, if you use Yoast SEO, it uses a sitemap index where it will have a first page of the sitemap and it will go to other kind of sub sitemaps. So that's what I'm going to do in this case because that's what I'm using. And I will just hit OK once I put it in there. And you can see it's going to go and get all of the files from all of the sitemaps. And once you do that, you just click OK. And from there, it will check and give you your results. And you can do the same sort of thing where you would uh, kind of go back to step one and download your broken links and, and things like that. Okay, the number four use is going to be to optimize your page titles. And to do this, um, after you've crawled, you would just come to the page titles tab here, and then you can see that you've got your URLs all in the first column, and uh, the next or the third column actually is page titles. So what you want to do is just look at them and a lot of times you will set a kind of a page title structure, say for example, if you're using Yoast and you know, it's easy to just set a structure, but a lot of times you don't really get an idea of what all of your page titles are going to look like. And here you can see that you can see that it's putting the name of your page that you've named it, or the name of your post and a dash and the, the name of your site. In some cases you might get a, title that gets kind of long and you might go, okay, well, I can see that that's going to be too long. Um, and the really cool thing about this is you can export a report and it gives you all of the information here, including the length of the title and not only the length in characters, but also the length in pixels, which is really uh, the thing you want to go by uh, when you're looking at optimizing your uh, Google search results. Uh, at some point, if your title gets too long, it's going to get cut off in Google search results. And, you know, that's a really important place to be uh, looking at to optimize your titles for because that's what's going to make someone click on your page or not click on it. So it's a good idea to come here and, and the best thing to do is just export a report and use that to optimize your titles. Okay, number five is going to be to identify pages with thin content. What you want to look for here is the word count. What's going to determine if it's enough? Like these are definitely not enough, 150 words. Um, but what's going to determine if it's enough is looking at your competitors' sites. So if your competitors' pages average around 2,000, 3,000, then you're going to want to do at least 3,000, if not 4,000. If your competitors' pages are on average like 10,000, then you're going to want to do at least 10,000, if not more. So just make sure to look at, you know, the top five, I would say. Don't just look at the number one and get an idea because the number one result might be some sort of a fluke and you might not need to do that much. Okay, number six is going to be to find links that are being redirected. Redirects aren't as bad as broken links, but it's still a good idea just to go ahead and fix those and don't let them get out of hand because they can. And to find redirects, you just go to bulk export, 
go to response codes, and then choose redirection 300 in links. This will give you a nice table where you've got the page that the redirect is on and the actual redirect that you can look for to change. Another really good report to look at is under reports and then under redirect chains. A redirect chain is basically when you're linking to a redirect and that redirect is redirecting to another page. So it happens if you've got one or more and it's really bad for SEO. So you wanna use this report to clean those up. Okay, number seven is gonna to be to find duplicate content. And the best way to do that, I think, is to come and again, look at your titles. Uh, in the past, I've been able to clean up a lot of pages just by looking at titles and seeing you know, if this page is about the same topic as another page is about, then I can probably make those all into one bigger blog post. And in most cases, I think nine times out of 10, you'll be rewarded by Google for that. It's just a good idea to merge any pages that are similar. Okay, number eight is gonna to be to find slow loading pages and you'll find some information about how fast your pages load kind of far down at the end of this list. It's under the response time. And this doesn't tell you how long the page actually took to load, but it does tell you if there are any problems with your server. Sometimes if you get a slow server, it could take you know, up to a second to respond to a request. And that's a really long time. It's really bad for that to happen. So you wanna just come and check these. If you're seeing any times over two tenths of a second or three tenths of a, of a second, it might be a good idea to check that more closely in another tool. Okay, number nine is gonna be you can use a Screaming Frog to check how your website is gonna look in Google's search results. And to do that, you would just come and click on one of the results and then come down to this bottom set of tabs and click the SERP snippet. And this is where you can see that. So again, if you've got any titles that are a little bit long, this is where you would be able to see that. And it's just one of those things you don't get to see very often, so it's good to see it kind of out in the wild or at least how it's going to look out in the wild and then you can you know make your changes from there okay number 10 the number 10 and final use is going to be to check internal links on your site and you can do that by going all the way down to the in links column and it's also a good idea to look at the level here now level zero means you're page where the crawl began and each link it has to follow after that it goes up a level so every other link after the home page is level one so there are no links further than level one on this site and a lot of sites you'll see you know level up to level four or up to level five um, if you've got links that are that deep it's probably a bad thing you might that means you probably want to add more links to them if a page is really important, you're gonna want it to be a level one. Also really important is gonna be how many links uh, go to a page. And you can see here at this column, it tells you how many links I've got to each page. Let's take a look specifically at this page. If it was a very important page, two links just might not be enough and I might wanna add some more links to it. So you can come here and just kind of figure out what you're linking to, where your links are going, and and it's a good way to kind of get a good high level look at things and, uh, and make changes from there. And here you can also see how many times you're linking out from each page. If you, if you get any links, if you get any pages with like more than 200 links going out, you might want to take a look and see how much content is on the page. If it's a page with a, a lot of content, that might be okay. But uh, yeah, you want to make sure that there's no kind of big outliers well, that's going to do it for this episode of All Things Blogging. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't checked out the podcast, make sure to do that. You could just go to allthingsblogging.com and you'll be able to listen and subscribe there. Also, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.